Wouldn't it be nice if every time you hit a forehand, you had the correct spacing? I mean, do you hate when it feels that way? When it's like the ball's too close, you're too far away, or you just whiff it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to have great spacing on your forehand, because this is so important. The better spacing you have to hit your forehand, not only can you swing freely, because you know, halfway, half of you guys out there wanna hit the ball harder, but there's no way you're doing that if the racket's catching your body like that. But not only that, it'll help you be more consistent. So if you're struggling with consistency, keep watching. So the very first thing I want you to understand that having good spacing has to do with using your non-dominant hand and your footwork. And so I'm gonna explain it and then we're gonna do some drills so you can do this at home. Because if you're not practicing these things, not taking actions, not building new habits, those same old darn pesky habits are gonna keep bugging you. Meaning that when you go out, you lose and nobody wants that to be a habit. So the very first thing I want you to understand is this. When we're moving out to the ball, we wanna track the ball with our outside leg. Uh, I just did a video on how you should use open stance first. And if you haven't watched that, well, you don't need to watch it right now. Go watch it later, but here's the link somewhere. But it's important because the way I wanna track the ball when the ball's coming to me is I wanna, especially on the forehand side, I'm gonna step out with my outside foot. Now, maybe I don't have to move that far, so I just have to kinda of skip and step out here, but I'm still lining with my outside foot. Or maybe I have to move a little bit more, and then, boom, I'm stepping out with my outside foot first, okay? The reason this is important is because my foot helps me line up the spacing for the ball. So if you find yourself stepping across like this, a couple things are gonna happen. You're gonna have a lot more trouble spacing yourself and you're not gonna be able to rotate. Rotation in your hips and your shoulders to send the power through the ball equals having more acceleration. And we wanna have acceleration while we're balanced. So the very first thing we wanna always do is get into a habit of after we split step and we're coming down, step out with my outside leg and find the ball with my outside leg. So in one second, I'm gonna do a drill so you can understand exactly how to do this. But here's what I want you to do in the meanwhile. I want you to just practice and you can do this at home, living room or court, wherever you are right now, just get a little space. Is that I just want you to practice going one, two, three. Now, obviously, you're not gonna take three steps for every ball, but this is a good guideline, okay? Once I hit, boom, I'm gonna turn and walk back. So it's just like turning and shaking somebody's hand and walking back. One, two, three, I'm on this outside leg first. So if you're used to stepping this way, I want you to start stepping with this foot and then come back, okay? We're gonna do one more, one, two, three, on the outside leg and then come back. Now, the next thing we have to start doing equally as using our feet to get to the ball, but is using our non-dominant hand. I call this the measuring stick, this thing right here. The reason it's the measuring stick is because when I prepare and stretch my hand out here, and you see all the pros doing it, they're taking the racket back, then they extend their hand out. Now, this not only helps them get into this coil position, which allows them to rotate, but it does another function. It helps them find the ball, meaning that if the ball isn't lined up with here, I'm probably not gonna make good contact. So I'm gonna use this camera for one second so you can see the angle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how big of a difference it makes when I don't use my hand to line up. So Daniel, can you feed me a ball? So this is gonna be lined up, you can see here, boom. You can see how I lined it up. Obviously I can't catch, I'll do one more. So right here I'm lining up and if I drop it, I can hit. Now watch what happens if I do this, see how it's not lined up, and if I were to swing, it'd be too close. I'll do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna swing this time. Go ahead, here, too close, see? So what if it's too far away? I have to reach, I can still get it, but it's not perfect. And if it's not perfect, it means I'm gonna be inconsistent. So now, we're gonna go do some drills so you can figure out exactly how to make sure that when you step on the court, you have the right spacing for your forehand. So now we're gonna have Daniel help us with some drills. Now all three of these drills are tr trying to help you to triangulate where you should be to have perfect spacing. I'm gonna start with the feet, then we'll work our way up to the hands, and then we're gonna do a drop fed drill that you can do on your own or with a partner, either one, and then we're gonna actually hit balls. So the very first uh, drill I'm gonna do is help you get into the idea of measuring your steps, meaning not taking too many steps, but also making sure they're the right size. Because even though you won't always have to take three steps, you can probably take three steps to the sideline, take three steps in a lot of different fashions. You might take three bigger steps or three smaller steps, but in general, three steps is a great rule. Now, if you have to go off the single court, you might need to take four or five but just giving you this kind of guideline, the three steps is a good place where you're not taking too many steps. So I'm going to feed this ball to Daniel and I'm going to roll it. And what he's going to do is measure the steps to take three steps and stop the ball. Okay, so watch how it's done. Okay, ready Daniel? So I'm rolling. So starting off really slow and you can see how he caught the ball with his outside foot. So go, 
going a little faster, boom. And so notice how if I, hopefully it stays on camera, if I go a little bit more, he said, oh, he took a couple more steps, but it's totally fine because he's being smooth and he's taking the right amount of balanced steps. He's not taking, could you do one and take like a ton of steps? Yeah. Ready, go. Yeah, so you might see this sometimes, you might hear this. Now, the, here's the thing. You don't wanna take a ton of steps if you, if you can help it because every step you take means that you're expending more energy. We wanna be very, very efficient with our footwork. So if possible, if you need to take extra steps, take it after you get there. But right now, we're gonna just still work on three steps. Ready? One, two, three, nice. Here we go, we're gonna do one more. One, two, three, nice. And so this is a great drill that you can do to make sure that when you're taking these steps, it puts you in the right position and you're not taking too many steps. Because part of if we wanna have the right spacing and we take a ton of steps and the ball's very difficult, that's a recipe for Ah, not being consistent because the ball is not going to be close enough or too far away. Either one, we don't want that. We want to be efficient when we move the ball. So the next drill we're going to do is have Daniel catch the ball with his left hand. Now, a couple of things. I do see players doing this a lot of times, but a lot of times what you'll see is they'll start here and then their hand will move here to uh, help them kind of track the ball. I much prefer having the hand here because by having the hand here, it puts you in the right position. Now, if you're worried about, hey, um, what am I supposed to do with that hand? Does it just stay there? Well, let me show you something really quick. If my hand's here and I'm rotating my hips and shoulders, if I don't move this hand, guess what happens? It moves out of the way. And generally, if you're gonna catch the racket, it'll go like this. The problem is when you don't know how to use your hips and shoulders, what happens is this. You're like, oh, this is in the way, this isn't working. So if you're experiencing that problem, make sure you go watch this video because it'll help you show you how to use your hips so to make sure that when you rotate, the left arm clears itself and you don't have to worry about it. So in this drill, he's gonna catch the ball with his left hand or at least touch the ball with his left hand. The key is this, he's not gonna move the left hand around, he's gonna keep it stable. And now by keeping it stable, it tells his feet where to be, okay? The big mistake a lot of players are making is that they have this hand bent like this. They take it back and their hand's bent in here and they're constantly making contact too close to the body. And that's why this drill is so important. Now there's one more thing I want you to understand when we talk about extending your arm. Just because I say extend your arm doesn't mean your arm has to be absolutely locked out straight, like so, ah, extending, killing. No, you don't need that. If your arm has a little bend, that's totally fine too. Because I see this sometimes where players are like, well, this feels like I'm not straight. Well, actually, this is straight enough. Where you get into trouble is when your arm starts getting to here. This is a big difference between here, here, very subtle, okay? But when you start getting to here, that's where you're gonna run into trouble. So make sure, when I say extended arm, as long as you're extended enough, so you can have a little bit of bend in it, but we don't wanna exceed bends that like are right around here or come around bends that are right around here. So ready? He's gonna reach across. Perfect, okay? And this is a great drill because if you notice, boom, we'll do one more. Oh, he cheated a little. We'll do one more. Good, good, good. Now, really important, one thing I wanna really highlight is that Daniel didn't pay attention to his feet because he's done this before. So if you have to pay attention to your feet and your hand, it's like, whoa, what's going on? You need to go back and do the footwork a lot more to make sure this becomes a habit. Once you're doing that, Daniel's just moving to the ball and noticing he's setting his hand to make sure it's in the right position now. So the very next rule we're gonna do is this, is I'm gonna have him catch the ball with his left hand. He's gonna catch it, but he's gonna have a racket this time. And then from here, he's just gonna drop it and then hit it. Because if you drop it and hit it, you'll notice how you're in great position. And by catching it, it really makes sure that you can check how extended your arm is, okay? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> oh, he okay, he caught himself. That's good. Now I got him thinking. Let's do a couple more. Ready? Good. So you can see how it's all coming together now. And from here, the last drill is basically I'm going to feed him a couple forehands, and now you'll see how the spacing will work. Ready? Good. 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 Now there's one more thing about the spacing that I want you to know is this. 
even though he's just moving sideways and the arms here, if I were to move him shorter by hitting the ball shorter, he wouldn't move his hand forward, he'd move his feet forward. And that's how he can use the measuring stick to always be in the right position. Ready? Good. And then also if I move them back a little bit, you can see how it's all the same. Now that you understand how to get in the right position, it's super crucial that you understand what makes a great forehand. And I have a great video right here talking about what I learned from Djokovic and what he taught me through watching video about his forehand that you can implement on your forehand to make the whole package absolutely perfect. Take care.